What's going on Fortnite fans, my name is Luke the Notable, and in this video, we'll be dropping into Pleasant Park 100 times. I'm ready for a challenge, I want to learn how to kill my enemies with efficiency and style, and I think Pleasant Park is just the place to do that. Pleasant Park may seem like a nice quiet little town, but if you've ever dropped here, you know that that is not the case. Sandwiched between Junk Junction, Haunted Hills, and of course, Tilted Towers, Pleasant Park isn't pleasant at all. The whole reason I do these videos is to try to get better at Fortnite, and going to Pleasant Park I think is one way to definitely do that. And by now you probably understand how these videos work. So I dropped into Pleasant Park 100 times and this is what happened. I'm just messing with you, audio's working. What can I say about Pleasant Park? For starters, it's a pretty old location in Fortnite. Here's a picture from the original map, and obviously the map looks way different today. Pleasant Park hasn't changed much though, it's still a nice area to go because of all of the loot available. In Pleasant Park you'll find several large houses filled to the brim with loot, as well as access to several named locations nearby. But of course, all of this loot means when you drop into Pleasant Park, you have to be ready for a fight. Pleasant Park is also fairly far away from the center of the Fortnite map, so there's a good chance that when you drop into Pleasant Park, you won't be in the safe area, and you'll have to do a lot of running. This is made incredibly hard by two other factors, Loot Lake and Tilted Towers. Generally, if you're running to the storm from Pleasant Park, you have to go around Loot Lake, often passing near Tilted Towers, which is of course one of the most traveled locations in Fortnite. Either way, the point here is that if you drop into Pleasant Park, be ready to die. Though the difference when you drop into Pleasant Park is that the people that you fight will always be armed to the teeth. Drop into a location like Dusty Divot and you might kill a guy straight off the bat because he didn't have a gun. But drop into Pleasant Park and these encounters just don't happen all that often. Most people you fight have some pretty decent loot and it can be hard to take them down. It forces you to work on mechanics in Fortnite like building and shooting, and ultimately made me much better at the game. I'll be going over some tips and tactics so that you can survive a little bit longer when you drop into Pleasant Park. But I think we should just get into game number one. Now I've been to Pleasant Park before. I'm, I'm not saying I'm an expert on Pleasant Park, but this isn't like, you know, my first time dropping in. It's actually a fairly simple location. Some flat land with some houses, easy places and landmarks to drop to. It's no wonder that it's a very popular location. What's cool about Pleasant is that for the most part, you generally will be left alone in one house. Now you'll see tons of other people dropping into the houses around you, but normally you have enough time to loot what's in one house before having to fight. Now sometimes you won't have to fight anybody in Pleasant Park. There's maybe a long bus or for whatever reason, no one drops in. in Game number one, that's what happened to me, and when this happens, you're gonna have some seriously awesome loot. Here I looted most of Pleasant, and then went to the small haunted house to the west of Pleasant Park. It's a decent location that can have some loot, a vending machine, mushrooms that give you shields, and a shopping cart potentially. The shopping cart spawns around the back of the house, though it won't spawn here every time, so don't count on it. There's actually quite a few shopping carts that could potentially spawn in Pleasant Park, and I'll be going over all those locations in this video. Pleasant Park can sometimes be far away from the circle, and the shopping carts can help. I made it all the way down to Greasy Grove, and caught this snorkel off in the process of healing. It was pretty hectic in a fairly far south circle, but I think I'm ready for this by now. And with three people left, I was shotgunned while running away. All right, game two. Now this is a bus, again, like game number one, where you might want to go to Pleasant Park. It's not necessarily going to be right over Pleasant Park, but it'll be close enough where the drop isn't too bad. I dropped onto the eastern side of the map in the teal house, and it's good to know that this teal house is actually pretty good. It can spawn up to three chests in two attics and the cellar, but it's important to know that the eastern side of the map is never the side you want to drop on. There's big bigger houses with more loot on the west side of the map versus the east side of the map, so it's always best to drop on the west. But if you have to drop into the east, it's not the end of the world. Pleasant's a tough place to fight because there's massive lines of sight in this map. There's really no natural barriers breaking it up, so if you can get on top of any of the houses, it's pretty easy to take people down, even from far away. Here's one of the many dangers of dropping into Pleasant Park, and that's running towards the safe circle. Because Pleasant Park isn't near the center of the map, sometimes it can be far away from the safe circle, and this can set you up for some pretty deadly encounters. Pleasant makes you better because every Everyone that drops in generally gets a full house of loot. That gives almost everyone you're going to fight in Pleasant Park a decent chance to kill you. Yeah, sometimes you're going to fight someone that you just outgun because you got better loot in your house, but for the most part, everyone you fight's going to have a decent chance. This particular game was absolutely crazy. If you remember before, this game was a quick bus into Pleasant Park. If you drop into Pleasant Park when the bus is like this, it's going to be tough, but I guess you got to play some tough games if you want to get better. Game 4, all I wrote down in my catalog was uh, not good. Game 5 was another game where I was alone in Pleasant Park. I was able to loot everything to my heart's content. In the playground mode, you can drop in alone and you have pretty much unlimited time. I just wanted to see how long it would take if you were alone in Pleasant Park and wanted to loot all of it. It took me 7 minutes to loot all of Pleasant Park, which is a pretty long time, especially considering the fact that I wasn't worried about any enemies fighting me. What I'm saying here is that sometimes when you drop into Pleasant Park alone, you won't necessarily have all the time in the world to loot the entire location. I know I might make it seem like this happens all the time, but it's actually fairly rare that you'll drop into Pleasant Park alone 
alone. It's a fairly traveled location, and especially with all the locations near it, you're definitely gonna have to fight someone. The final circle was all the way down in Lonely Lodge. I had decent loot and a fairly good chance to win the game. With three people left, I built my best, but in the end, was still killed. Game six, I dropped directly into the haunted house. This is a pretty good place to drop because it can spawn some good chests, and of course, you get that shopping cart. There's also a pretty large forest with a lot of wood nearby. It'll provide good cover and materials, so if you don't like the hecticness of Pleasant Park, this can be a good place to drop. In this particular game, I got a very large, serious amount of wood and decided to take back my land. But in the end, my wood wasn't hard enough, and he had a shotgun. Game seven was a quick bus into Pleasant Park. I dropped into the North Brick House, which is one of my favorite houses to drop into. Oh, and literally always, every time, please do not forget to destroy the furniture. Remember, you're gonna fight some hardened men if you drop into Pleasant Park, so you're gonna need all the materials you can get your hands on. And on a side note, this storm was absolutely ridiculous. The second I saw this storm, I knew I'm, I'm dead. I had looted three houses and had some decent loot. Nothing too crazy, but I could fight. Killing people is very important in Pleasant Park. I know it may make it sound like I try to avoid violence at any cost, but you need to kill people. Remember, there's a lot of loot here and there's no way you're gonna get it all yourself. But if you can take people out, then you effectively can loot all of Pleasant Park. But you ain't gonna fight no defaulty boys in Pleasant Park. No, you're gonna fight some sweats. I tried to build around this dark night and ran out of materials. I turned around with my blue pump and a prayer. I hit one shot to the body, but that was not enough to save my life. Try not to run out of materials, cause guys like Philly Killer 69 will get you. Game eight, I had to drop onto the east side, but if you drop into this north white brick house, it's actually not a bad drop. I made my way over to the west side and double pumped some rival gang members. Yeah, I'm still working on the double pump. The shotgun was nerfed or buffed, it's just changing a lot. I don't really wanna. While looting this crazy place, I was shotgunned in the back. You know what I love? Getting shotgunned in the back for like my entire health bar one time. But earlier, I double pumped this guy, did like 14 damage. Bungie, fix your game. I actually lived that encounter with seven health and was able to restore my health all the way to full. I ran into the house and set up a trap, and while running for safety, I was tragically killed. Game 9, I dropped into Frank. This is the house in the southeastern corner of Pleasant Park. When I touched down, all I could find was a green burst. This man approached me with a shotgun, and somehow I wasn't killed. To talk more about Frank, it's a house that looks really cool, but you don't really want to drop here. It may look like a pretty cool house, but it's actually one of the worst in the whole location. It can only spawn up to one chest in the garage. There was quite a lot of turmoil over on the west side, and I was determined to get some loot. Materials are incredibly important in Pleasant. A lot of kills that you're going to get are from people just running out. This is one of those rare matches where Pleasant park is in the circle to begin with. Doesn't happen very often, but when it does, this is when you're going to want to get all the loot in Pleasant. I left Pleasant Park with four kills. Every time I close my eyes, I see their faces. Directly south of Pleasant Park, there's a large stadium that can house some pretty decent loot. I popped an unexpecting Omega for the kill. While moving towards the safe circle, I was attacked by a default skin. He came pretty close to killing me. At the end of the day, the dog default skin don't know no better. I found another default skin trying to build a wall. He moved right at the last second. I wasn't entirely sure if this guy really knew what he was doing but uh you know he's in a better place now attention if you build up a shack like this in the final circle I'm, I'm gonna come find you really you're not you're not fooling anybody with six players left I was completely out of materials but I had rockets so there was some hope I rocketed another player at the perfect moment for him to fall to his death it was actually a lot more luckier kill than I thought I had set up a trap here that he had accidentally fallen into and that's what got me the kill it's okay little default skin you'll be with your brother soon it was me and one other guy in the final circle in tilted towers but I was suddenly attacked and brought down to five health don't worry, I ended up getting away. He tried to build up over me, not knowing that I had a rocket launcher. And that was ultimately what got him killed. Game 10, I played some duos with Jay Green. Pleasant Park's a great place for duos because there is so much loot. It's hard as a solo player to loot all of it in one go, even if you are alone. I dropped into the North Brick White House. Make sure to never forget the doghouse chest. Some people do, especially defaulties. I was attacked by a carbide with no armor, which is basically a default skin. Me and Jay Green were doing some serious exterminating of Pleasant Park, and the circle was upon us as well. This is one of those games where you're gonna wanna stick around in Pleasant Park and loot everything. You'll have the time and maybe get the win. Once we killed the guys in Pleasant, we were pretty much left alone. We even made all the way down the loot lake and got some free stuff check out this shot i mean yeah you know yeah there's always going to be shots that are longer than mine and this isn't the world record by any means but you know still pretty long shot this circle was going to be a tricky one there was only a small piece of land that wasn't in loot lake also you got to remember that in this series i've wanted back-to-back -back wins since i started and i've never done it i'm not saying it happens or anything I'm, I'm just i'm just hyped you know it was jay green and i against another duo we had a ton of firepower so we were basically just waiting for them to come to us i had a minigun with 999 bullets so i was just trying to sneak around because once i started 
shooting this thing, it was pretty much game over. But Jay Green actually got taken down. I built up in their rear without them seeing me. They jump padded to our previous structure. I wasn't too worried. I still had a minigun with almost a thousand bullets, and if you have one of those, yeah, victory's pretty easy. The one on top was being fairly careless with his head placement while shooting rockets. And once it was one-on-one, -on -one, I knew that the game was over. This video is brought to you by whatever ad plays after this. It's been 10 minutes. It's time. Game 11, I was playing in the squads mode with Diverse Ermine 28, Rollerblades 46, and Sorrow Killer 90! Yeah, it didn't go very well. Game 12, I discovered that the helpful shack in the southern part of Pleasant Park can sometimes have a shopping cart. Now, in this particular game, I didn't use the shopping cart, but it's good to know. Someone ordered a pizza with pineapples, so I tried to kill the delivery man. He entered my private domicile. I had to take him down. While fixing the shingles, I noticed a fight at the neighbor's place. This is probably the worst shooting you'll see in any video across all of YouTube in your entire life. While attempting to fight this carbide who was on my lawn, I jumped off and it did a little bit too much damage. I also missed a lot of shots. Yeah, I didn't really deserve life. Game 13, I went to the chest in the middle of the soccer field. Don't do this. It's an awful strategy. I burgled my way into the crack house. Thankfully, there was no home security system. When you're fighting on rooftops, be very careful. You gotta make sure you can't let the other guy get the high ground. Also, remember that Pleasant Park is very flat and has very long sight lines. So if you're having a fight, someone else probably knows about it. You have to always be wary because there's tons of name book right outside Pleasant Park. So even if you leave Pleasant Park alive, someone's gonna be looking to kill you. And the far storms do not help. If you drop into Pleasant Park consistently, you're gonna have some pretty terrible games. But that's not to say you can't win at this location. And dropping here consistently, I think made me definitely a better player. But remember, we're still only on game 14. Game 15, I was surprised by a default noob that had a soul. Game 16, I wore the omen skin without the cape. Yeah, I think you know why. I was alone in Pleasant. I left with some pretty decent stuff. I took down this guy with an SMG and then this guy with a burst. Let's look in depth at this build fight and why I lost. I, I think it might be a little bit fun. I see a guy pushing up and I go for the really easy stairs above him. Once I'm up here, I know he's below me, so I'm really just looking for a clean shot at this point. I might have been able to get him if right here I just ended up spraying him with my SMG and not switching over to my hunting rifle. I tried to build up, but yeah, I messed it up. I'll sometimes do this when I'm running away. I'll put floors above my head and just sprint straight out from the structure. If they don't build immediately when you start doing this, it's a good counter. Here I should have just kept building if he was spraying me. If someone's shooting into you, most of the time you're going to be able to outfit build whatever gun they have. I mean, you can't outbuild a minigun, but for the most part, just keep building. I had a lot of bad plays, I missed a lot of shots, and yeah, I died. Game 17, I dropped into the North Red Brick House. It's still my go-to drop for Pleasant Park. I found a purple pump shotgun in Pleasant Park, and I pounded a patron in his pituitary gland. For real though, the shotgun is the greatest thing of all time. I ran out of materials and limped injured into the forest. Not gonna lie, the little forest north of Pleasant Park is a decent place to come and get some wood. I don't know, it might have worked if I didn't have about 400 other people chasing after me. Game 18. Don't worry, I'll get them all done in about 20 minutes or so. Game 19, I did a lot of damage, but, you know, not enough. Game 20 was played on the Switch, because who the hell cares? I still dropped into Pleasant Park. It was a pretty good bus for it. Every now and then I play on the Switch, because it's just full of, like, true defaults. I already primarily play Fortnite on console, so going over to the Switch wasn't that hard. I was alone in Pleasant. I looted what I could, and then I left. Aiming's a little different on the sticks, which is something you sort of gotta get used to. I imagine most of the people that I come across are playing on the handheld mode, and it, it's almost impossible to play on the handheld mode. Like that guy? No way he was playing with a controller. I guess Fortnite really hasn't been on the Switch that long. Or yeah, maybe it's just because it doesn't look very good. I don't know, 30 FPS Fortnite's kind of tough. Has no one taught these men to build? I'm not saying everyone on the Switch is bad, and obviously this will change the longer that Fortnite is on the Switch. In fact, pretty much in every solo that I played on the Switch, there's going to be at least one other sweat in the game with you. But kill him, and, and yeah, you win the game. Oh yeah, time for some default justice. This guy didn't even have a chance. I was built up in the storm. The guy at the end had some rockets and a fair amount of materials. It wasn't going to be an easy fight, but I thought I could get him. I did the one thing that always works against me when I lose fights when I have rockets. I built up until he killed himself. Game 21, I dropped to the stadium just north of Pleasant Park. Generally, not a lot of people drop here, and there can be some pretty good loot. It's pretty large and pretty open, so it'll take a while to loot. I probably could have won if I had made that shot. Game 22, I dropped into the teal house, got a kill of my own, and then died on the west side. Game 23 started pretty well. I had a rocket launcher. That didn't stop me from not seeing this trap. Yeah, game 24 didn't go very well. Game 25, I had a pretty pitiful shotgun battle, and I lost. Game 26, I dropped into Pleasant Park, and there was pretty much no one around. The circle stayed right in Pleasant Park all the way to the end. I was determined to fight and win in Pleasant Park, at least one time for the video. But I was killed, like, insanely quickly. What is this? The only thing that happens in game 27 is I put on the technique skin, change my dance to take the L, and start the game. Yeah, then it, then it just cuts out. Game 28, I was pretty upset about this shotgun 
Pleasant Blast. Game 29, I became the champion of Pleasant Park. All of the loot was mine. I spent far too much time looting and yeah, died in the storm. Well, more by running from the storm, but it's basically the same danger. We're not really gonna talk too much about game 30. Game 31, I found an early rocket launcher, which helped a ton. I really don't know why people think this works, cause uh, you know, it doesn't. While very close to the storm, I blasted this valor. Someone please ask me why I had almost a thousand, no, I had well over, I had well over a thousand materials and I still died. Game 32, I dropped into the crack house. It's a great place to go on the west side. It's identical to the one in Salty Springs. I did a video on that, check it out. I ran into some trouble outside of Tilted Towers. This almost always happens. And while moving into the towers for safety, I was killed by a trap. Game 33, I played with my real life friends. They could tell you my deepest and darkest secrets. We were all pretty much instantly killed. Game 34, I pistoled an intruder and was quickly shotgunned by his Rust Lord friend. The squad saved me and uh, had fun without me. In the end, they were pretty close to victory. They actually came in second place. Game 35, we were just pretending to suck. I gotta say, going pleasant in squads mode is actually pretty fun. Everyone generally gets their own house of loot, and if you can survive, it's not a bad place to be. Oh yeah, gotta love the thermal scoped rifle. Well, we tried, and that's what matters! I still hold by that pleasant's a good place to go to get better. Be careful when you go to Pleasant Park, even the defaults can be nasty. Game 38, I really tried, but all I had was a gray burst. Game 39 is missing. I don't know what happened. Game 40, we enjoyed open combat in Pleasant Park. It's the best kind of combat! More people die that way! Yeah, we didn't make it. Game 41, I threw explosives behind me and it gave me a juicy double kill. Tactically, we probably shouldn't have been fighting these guys, but, you know, it's too much fun. We were forced to push through Tilted Towers and it got a little messy. And Zoe skins aren't really known for their ability to clutch the squad win. Game 42, I dropped into multi-team mode. These bigger team variants are pretty fun in Fortnite. We did not win. Game 43, I again dropped into the multi-team mode. I looted too long and the storm got the best of me. Game 44, I purchased a harvesting tool that I've wanted for a pretty long time. I then accidentally dropped into duos and died. Game 45, I left Pleasant Park the champion. My loot was supreme. Oh yeah, and of course, you know I was caught in the storm. Just eating some apples, don't mind me. Outside of Retail Row, I laid a trap for an unsuspecting player. It actually worked. I checked the loot, but unfortunately, it didn't upgrade me that much. I was allegedly involved in a massive build war just outside of Retail Row. My legal counsel would like me to inform you that I built valiantly, but in the end, I ran out of mats and came in second place where I belong. Game 46, I think I was still trying to figure out those dual pistols. Game 47, I had like literally nothing. Ta-dum! If things get tight in Pleasant Park, one thing you can do is come to the Eastern Berms. They're pretty good indestructible cover that you can sit behind and snipe. There's also some trees over here that you can farm if you're low on materials. It can be a good strategy to wait here and intercept any players coming from Pleasant Park or other named locations. Don't forget the Northeast Caravan of Hop Rocks. Very useful for getting around the map. You want to analyze how I died again? I think that could be kind of fun. So I hear a guy over here and I build upstairs. I stupidly shoot a rocket that destroys... Oh... It was, it was dumb. Game 50. Game 51. Game 52. Game 53 doesn't show my death, just the guy that killed me. Game 54, I was very low on materials and died. Game 58, somehow I was alone in Pleasant Park, but still left with some trash loot. I found a default, cowering in Anarchy Acres. A technique wanted a piece of me as well. The snorkel ops, they think they're so good. I saw this trick on Twitter and I decided to try it. Follow me on Twitter, by the way. I post some cool stuff. My problem was the storm overtook me and I was way too high up and then I tried to edit and it didn't really go too well. Yeah, this was a pretty embarrassing death. Game 56, more death in open combat. Game 57 was a quick bus and a quick death. Game 58, I was minding my own business healing when I was tragically killed. You know what, little default? One day you'll grow up big and strong, but not today. Don't let the quick editing fool you. I got a lot better at Fortnite thanks to dropping at Pleasant. Problem is, I'm still dropping directly into Pleasant. Game 61, I dropped into Moisty Mire instead because I needed a break. Not really, this is just a creative way to tell you more about Pleasant Park. Drop into a place like Moisty Mire that's pretty far away from the middle of the map and you're gonna probably not run into anybody. You'll be able to doodle around pretty much to your heart's content. There's seven people left, I haven't even killed anybody. My first kill was this defaulty boy. Don't worry, I burned the body. What I'm getting at here is that if you drop into a place like Moisty Mire, it's a lot easier to get to the end game. You're not going to fight that many people, which gives you better odds. But of course, that doesn't mean that you're always going to win. Game 61, time for some sweaty squads. This is why you defaulty boys need to hold hands when you're dropping in. We conquered Pleasant, played pretty well, and in the end, we won. Game 63 was basically the exact opposite. Game 64, I messed up the drop and had to land at the Shack of Shame. I charged into Pleasant and perished. You know, I really like this skin, but I've never really gotten a chance to get a win with it. This game is no exception. The last thing I did before 
before I died was curse his whole family. Game 67, I had a really bad drop into Frank. I narrowly escaped a fight with a whatever, uh, that's good. Burnout. That's what that one's called. Yeah, burnout. But then a bandolier took me down. I am actually terrible at this. Ah! Just please stop. Game 71 is missing. To the southwest of Pleasant, you'll find a large mountain with shopping carts on top. It's not a great drop. I mean, chests can spawn here, but they're, you know, kind of rare. In this game, I didn't get any. But you can shopping cart pretty far, which is kind of fun. <laughs> Nailed it! Oh wow, I actually made it pretty far in that one. Yeah, that one I did pretty good too. Here I probably could have lived if I just kept building. Game 75 was a nasty game in Pleasant Park with a bad storm. I got tons of kills in Pleasant and all of the loot, but with this far of a storm, it was still gonna be tough. Dropping Pleasant is hard, so if you're gonna drop here, expect less wins. But again, it definitely made me better. I get it! I'm dying a lot! It happens! It's like you kill one guy, 17 others show up! I know a gun! <laughs> no, this time for real. This time I'm gonna do okay. Everything's gonna be fine. <laughs> I do win later, don't click away yet. What do you want me to say? Pleasant is absolute nuts. If you kill a guy, someone else is gonna come and kill him. And look at it! The defaults! Game 82, I played pretty well, but I was really woofing in this shotgun battle. Game 83, the neighbors were out of town. A shopping cart can spawn to the north of Pleasant Park right here. It's pretty useful for getting across large areas of the map when the storm is far away. I made it all the way to Risky Reels and silenced the John Wick. Chug Jug for 500 wood? Yeah! I picked a fight with an Omega that I almost won several times. But in the end, he killed me. Looking back at this game, I definitely should have healed. I am very upset. Yeah, the woods aren't pleasant either. And remember, long sight lines. Keep your head down. I fired upon an unarmed man in the crack house. Then I killed an aggressor at the south of the town. Again, pretty long circle and I was trapped in the storm. And when that happens, it's pretty hard to stay alive. Yeah, I probably should have killed this guy. I probably could have killed this guy, but I didn't kill this guy. Oh look, a friendly little default. <laughs> Game 91, I was very close to winning, but that doesn't mean nothing! Game 92, I was left pretty much alone in Pleasant Park. I found a default that wanted to die. I'm doing a lot better in building as well. I'm able to counter people that are building up against me, and it feels pretty good. But sometimes all you need is a good old-fashioned shotgun. In the end, I terrorized a fellow player with my thermal assault rifle, and I got the win. Game 93, I probably should have just kept building. I would have been fine. Yeah, but then game 94, I built too long and died. Game 95, I was again alone in Pleasant Park. Woohoo! I killed quite a few gentlemen on my way to the safe circle. This was a one-on-one. -on -one. I had rockets. I had the high ground. I should have won. See, I was a dummy and tried to push up on him, but when I tried to push up, I used my remote explosives instead of my rocket launcher. That caused me to fall, which gave me some health. He hit me with a shotgun. I tried to one away but my rocket launcher didn't have any rocket I had to go around the storm and when I turned around to reload the rocket launcher I built this stair but he was already over the top of me which I couldn't do anything to stop and he killed me with a shotgun. Game 96 I pretty much just had a minigun and a prayer but sometimes that's all you need. I know it was sort of a cheap win with the minigun but I dropped in Pleasant so I was happy. Game 97 with three people left I found an Omega running underneath my fort. I took him down pretty easily but that alerted my position to the final player. He was able to jump up straight to the top of my structure with a jump pad and from the air he took me down with his shotgun. I found it strange that in game 98 I made it to 12th place with all the fighting around Pleasant Park. Game 99, I made it to the final circle with three people left and two kills. Though my loot was not very good. I don't know, I didn't really have a plan. I knew I probably wasn't going to win with just an SMG. Now it's time. Game 100. I dropped into Pleasant Park. It wasn't too crowded. Not necessarily empty, but not crowded. I only had to kill two guys, which I did pretty easily. I ended up killing a pretty low health guy down in Loot Lake. Oh, and this guy was trying to kill me, but he should have known that I had a rocket launcher. Remote explosives are literally the greatest thing in the entire game. At this point, I'm thinking I could win this one. I have a gold scar, purple pump, and a rocket launcher. But when moving about my structure, I didn't realize that I couldn't build walls everywhere. Pleasant Park is a tough location, but it's definitely a great one. For the most part, you're going to play people that are armed and know what they're doing in Fortnite, and that's how you get better. It's been here since the beginning, and I think it'll be here for a very long time. In fact, I'm predicting it might be one of the only places that doesn't change, because really, it hasn't. I mean, stuff is really going down for the start of Season 5, which is just about to happen, but Pleasant? Same, same old, same old. And if you did enjoy this video, I got more coming, so, you know, stay tuned. Anyway, Fortnite boys, that is the end of this video. I do hope you enjoyed it. Please check out my other videos that I've made on Fortnite on Salty Springs, Dusty Divot, and Risky Reels. Make sure to click that LTN logo in the bottom left corner of your screen to subscribe to my channel and follow me on Twitter. I post good, sh good stuff there. Thank you all for watching. I want you to please stay notable and I'll see you in the next one.